Hey guys, my name is Akshay Bahadur. Uh, today I'll be talking about my uh, my research project, Indian Sign Language Recognition System, also called as ISTA. Uh, before we start, uh, just want to give a brief introduction about myself. Uh, so I'm currently working as a senior data scientist at Lowe's. I'm also a world developer expert in machine learning. I received the most influential young data scientist of the year award in 2019. I was awarded a top Intel Innovator Award in 2019. I've been invited for over 50 sessions and keynotes uh, on machine learning. So these are, uh, these are some of the snippets from the conferences. You can see uh, uh, I've been to a couple of conferences sharing my work. And this research project is based is, uh, is an outcome of, of getting those experience uh, when uh, going out there. So before we start, an important link for everyone. So if you want to follow along or if you want to get some references uh, to, to the sites, just go to bit.ly slash pydata hyphen 20 and you will be redirected to my GitHub page, uh, which has this repository. And you can just click on the links of, of the slides and follow along. Or you can even uh, open some uh, issues on the, on the GitHub itself on the repository if you have any questions. So with that in mind, let's start with the project. Uh, so let's start with the definition. So the project demonstrates the use of machine learning to develop and channelize an Indian sign language recognition system. So these two terms, develop and channelize, are important for us. Uh, we'll discuss about these two terms specifically in, in some of the later slides. Uh, let's move along. So now we are defining our problem statement. So some of us, uh, so I did some research, initial research about uh, around 16 months back about, uh, about the scope of our project. So what I realized is that 40 million uh, people in India are currently suffering from speech and hearing impairment. Uh, 80 kilometers is a different distance between Mumbai and Pune, two major cities in, in, in Maharashtra. Uh, these, these are the places where I work and I live respectively, like my hometown. Uh, and within 80 kilometers, the sign language has uh, very uh, significant changes. So let's come up with an ideal solution. So based on my research, uh, the ideal solution had some key features. First, uh, was to standardize ISL, like American Sign Language. So American Sign Language is standardized uh, within the US. So anybody who's a deaf and mute can, who's a deaf and mute person can travel from and to and from different states without having to learn a different version of sign language. Uh, also, can we leverage AI to accurately predict minute changes in signs and symbols? So this is where AI or machine learning becomes very effective to be able to, be able to generalize well uh, to the data at hand. Third is most important for me was to keep the resource intensity to a bare minimum. Uh, this will ensure that I could scale my model. I could uh, reach, reach out to people who are not uh, living in a very posh areas, but they still want to make use of this technology. So I do not use any uh, internet or heavy GPUs or any external hardware uh, because I wanted to keep uh, this accessible to the to most of the people. So the methodology that I followed uh, was to actually categorize the problem into three different subcategories. So if I knew uh, about the hand movement, if I knew about the facial expressions, and if I had some idea about the pose of the person, I could come up with an interpolation. So this was my thought process. And what I did was I divided my work into different phases. So this comes the development part. Um, and this is where I actually went to an NGO. I studied sign language for about six to seven months. And this is a video from that NGO. So these are some of the students from the NGO who have been a student, as well as they are uh, also now uh, learning, uh, uh, I mean, they're part of the sign language community in India. And they and these guys really helped me and my friends to know about sign language and what are the problems that they have faced, and how can uh, as a, uh, how can us as a community improve their uh, their standard of living. So uh, you can find the whole video on, on my YouTube channel. Uh, so I divided the work in phases as already mentioned. So phase zero uh, was only working with hand gestures. So as you can see, I'm only working with hand gestures. Uh, so these are different uh, different digits and different alphabets. So these are different interpretations for different alphabets and the results were very promising. So I used image processing and integrated that with machine learning. 
to uh, come up with an application that uh, that could um, uh, uh, you know that could interpret these much these uh, sign languages in runtime. As you can see, I'm only working with alphabets and digits. Therefore, the model is not very complex. Now, the phase one was uh, was as already discussed. Facial expression were very important for us. So I came up with this algorithm of using a sign language uh, of using hand gestures as well as facial key points uh, to make our model more robust. And the results were really promising. So as you can see, that I'm only working with a, uh, a skeleton image. So on the right, you see uh, my facial key point tracking mechanism as well as my hand gesture mechanism. So even though there are a lot of background noise in the in the in the in the frame, I'm only working with just some key aspects, and this made my model to be lightweight and it could even scale uh, to reach millions of people. Then I use uh, I came up with another technique. Uh, this is so this is integrating word text to speech. Uh, so this would make sure that I could reach out to more people. So you can check out the whole uh, video about about this process on my YouTube channel. And one of the one of the very interesting things that happened was I was invited by Google at, uh, by Google to visit the headquarters in California, and I got a chance to present my work to the TensorFlow team itself. Here's a small snippet of it. So you can have a look at the whole video uh, if you're really, really interested. It's on my YouTube channel. And it's around seven to eight minutes um, where I got a chance to just give an elevator pitch of my project. And I also got good feedback from the community as well as the TensorFlow team on how I could improve this on, uh, on this application. So uh, with that, I would like to end my session. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you have any feedback, for my presentation or for my application, if you feel that I could improve certain aspects, feel free to do that. Feel free to reach out to me at akshabahal.com. Uh, we can just drop your comments or uh, some references. I will have a look at that. I will definitely get back to you as quickly as possible. So once again, thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Akshay Bahadur. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Akshay Bahadur. You can even follow me on my personal website, akshabahal.com. Or if you want to, if you, want to, uh, get, if you want to get all the information about this session, go to bit.ly slash pi twenty. This is where I have all the slides and all the references. So with this, I would like to uh, thank each and every one of you for listening to me. I hope you guys are keeping safe. And I'm also hoping that we meet soon in person. Take care of yourself. Bye.